Uh, first of all, I want to say uh, to the Joplin uh, group, I want to thank all of you. You have been a, uh, a very good spiritual uh, help in my life. I don't think I would really be here if it weren't for you, so thank you. My uh, text for this evening was going to be from Isaiah chapter 40, verse 6. Not necessarily a verse that you would think of when we were speaking of glory, but it says, the, vo the voice said, cry. And he said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all the goodliness thereof is as the flower of the field. Man has no glory, really, in and of himself. He, uh, he was stripped of glory when Adam and Eve uh, transgressed against God. All the glory in the earth uh, fell, and the earth was cursed. I uh, looked in a concordance uh, at the word glory and its other forms, uh, glorify, glorious, and there are over 330 verses, and none, I didn't read them all, but none of them that I can really see referring to man having glory without God. Um, this uh, phrase in here that I want to look at, all flesh is grass, the word flesh usually in scripture can have th uh, one of three different meanings. One being the sinful nature, also another being uh, mankind in general, uh, something that you can count in the population, and the other being the body, the skin itself. In this text, uh, this has the idea of the body. The amplified version, uh, somewhat of a paraphrase, it says all flesh is as frail as grass. The idea of it can it has weakness, it can become sick. <clears throat> um, death has prevailed ever since the world began on man. You look uh, through history with all the wars, millions of people died through wars, um, epidemics, uh, the Black Death, bubonic plague, um, and death is really no respecter of persons. So <clears throat> there's different diseases. We have leprosy, malaria, tetanus, all these. Most of these diseases uh, would have been fatal years ago, but some of them we have antibiotics for now. But what I'm trying to get across to you is that the body is temporary. It's not, it's not going to be here forever. And so why, therefore, would we, uh, why would we place a lot of stock in this body if it's not going to be here forever? Uh, scripture refers to it as a tabernacle or a tent. Second Corinthians 5, 1 Corinthians 5.1 For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. <clears throat> Even the greatest of men will die. It doesn't matter what uh, status you're in, whether you're famous, such as the president, or, uh, or even uh, such as the uh, Alka Indians that the brother was uh, talking about yesterday. It doesn't matter. Everyone's going to die. Everyone's, uh, everyone's going to die. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. And as it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. We look and uh, I want to ask, what good is fame and fortune? What good will it be after, after we're gone here? Mark 8, 36. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and, let, and yet lose his own soul? Two things I want to discuss about this verse. First of all, <clears throat> in order to gain the world, you have to have pretty close ties to it, and you also have to be a friend of it. And, and if you're a friend of the world, you're also an enemy of God. <clears throat> there's a, I want to go through a list of things that... There's, there's some things that you can't mix, such as heaven and earth. Romans 1.18, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. You also cannot mix mortality and immortality. Luke 24.1, Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher, and they entered in, and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And, they, and as they were afraid, they bowed down their faces to the earth. And they, the angels, said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? By this time, Jesus Christ had conquered death, had been raised, 
So why, therefore, would they be looking for Jesus Christ among the tombs and the graves? You also can't mix uh, faith and sight. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. For we walk by faith, not by sight. They, they don't go hand in hand. Faith and sight don't. If you walk by sight, you're, you're going to fall. You're gonna, and in the end, you won't get up. You'll have eternity in hell. But if you walk by faith, you may fall, but a righteous man will get up. <clears throat> you can't mix being in this body with being with God. 2 Corinthians 5, 8, we are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. You also can't mix serving God and serving the flesh. Luke 16, 13, no servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. <clears throat> also James 4, 4, the adulterers and adulteresses, knowing not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. So we see here we can't mix heaven and earth or uh, the immortal or the mortal. So how are, our, how are we going to end up in heaven? Well, our bodies have to be changed into glorified bodies. 1 Corinthians 15, 51, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trump shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Now, the realization of this, that man has no glory without Christ, only it enhances God's glory. <clears throat> I want to use the example of uh, a jeweler displaying, his, displaying diamonds. A jeweler that displays diamonds, he doesn't put the diamond on the glass case itself. He puts it on a black cloth, usually, to display the brightness of the, of the diamond. If we, are, if we portray ourselves as righteous and good to others, you know, good church folk, um, it's like placing God, who's the diamond, on that glass case. You show yourself to others as being good. God's glory in, in their sight would pale. <clears throat> but if we were to portray ourselves as we were before we came to Christ, as sinners, as Isaiah 64, verse 6 says, But we all are as an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are as filthy rags, and we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. Also Romans 3.10, as it is written, There is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way, they have together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an opal and sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit, the poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood, destruction and misery are in their ways, and the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. If we uh, show ourselves like this before coming to Christ, it would be like setting the diamond on the black cloth. God's glory would be so much more evident and the contrast would be greater. All glory is God's. We see this uh, with Moses, the story of Moses. We look in uh, Exodus 15:1. Then Moses, then sang Moses with the children of Israel this song unto the Lord, and spake, saying, "I will sing unto the Lord, for He hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and the rider He hath thrown into the sea." Also Exodus 7, first part of that. And in the morning, then ye shall see the glory of the Lord. Also Exodus 16.10, And it came to pass, as Aaron spake unto the whole congregation of the children of Israel, that they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. Also Exodus 24.16, And the glory of the Lord abode upon Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And the seventh day he called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud, and the sight of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on top of the mount in the eyes of the children of Israel. And lastly, Exodus 29, verse 43. And there I 
And there I will meet with the children of Israel, and the tabernacle shall be sanctified by my glory. Yet, as we see through uh, the history of the nation of Israel, this glory had little effect on the way they looked at God. Jude 1.5 said, I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. God does not take unbelief lightly. <clears throat> Matthew 17.19 Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could we not cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. And uh, Romans 11.20, on a more serious note, it uh, says, because of your unbelief, because of unbelief, they were broken off. When the Lord destroys, there's no bringing back. <clears throat> we see in scriptures that everything that Christ does is glorious. His work, we see in Psalms 111, verse 3. His work is honorable and glorious, and his righteousness endureth forever. We also see his majesty. In Psalms 145, verse 12, to make known the sons of men his mighty acts and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. His voice we see in Isaiah 30, 30, and the Lord shall cause his glorious voice to be heard and shall show the lightning down of his arm with the indignation of his anger and with the flame of a devouring fire and with scattering and tempest and hailstones. We see the gospel of Christ is glorious. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4, In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. And also his power. Colossians 1.11 Strengthen with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and longsuffering with joyfulness. And lastly, his appearing. Titus 2.13, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lastly, I want to discuss uh, the glory manifested in us. We want to, I want to take a look at the tabernacle, which is actually a picture of man. I have a list here of items made of gold, bronze, and silver. The items made of gold, have, we have the ark, rings, poles, anointment cover, cherubim, tables, plates, dishes, clasps, frames, and hooks. We also have an items made of bronze. We have clasps, altar, utensils, pots, bowls, forks, and fire pans. We have rings, poles, and tents. And also items made of silver. We have bases, bands, hooks, base, shafts, and branches. All this to say that inside the tabernacle is probably more glorious than what we have ever seen before everything overlay with silver, bronze, or silver. And yet, all this was covered in uh, badger skins. Nothing very glorious about that. <clears throat> so this is a picture of us. We are the earthen vessels, what would uh, be represented here as the badger skins. But Christ, uh, Christ put within us something far greater than silver or gold, though. He placed within us the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Romans 5, 5. And hope, it, and hope maketh not ashamed, because of the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. 1 Corinthians 12, 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Also 2 Corinthians 1, 22. Who hath also sealed us and given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. And 1 John 3, 24. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the Spirit which he has given us. Lastly, I want to leave you with uh, the immortal words of our brother Jude. This has been uh, said a lot this, this past week from Jude uh, 124. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Amen.